then I was muted. At least I think I was. Like some would think I was mad. I'm not mad. Did I just blow that? Well, it wouldn't be the first time. I don't know if uh, Doc's gonna. Uh, he, he's he's working on something for me. A couple of things actually. Don't know if he's going to look at that son. Woo! Uh, join us, but I can certainly play his trailer. At least his old one. I'm gonna download the new one. Hey, Drake Donald. Nothing Lasts Forever was actually the book that Die Hard, the movie, was based on. Just for you Die Hard fans out there. Oh, did I change it on another format? It was supposed to say 1984 at the end. Uh, if you're interested in nice uh, 1984 adaptations, the Peter Cushing 1984 uh, link is up in the chat there. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube. I plan to um, earlier, I mean later, not earlier, later. Shadow showed up then. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Shadow showed up then left. Well, he put that up there along, you know, early, early. So no, he hasn't, he hasn't technically, well, yes. I mean, I guess he did. He, he put the comment up there and uh, yeah, he's running a little later, whatever. So only seven days till Christmas. Yes. A week. I'm ready. I guess. I never know what I'm going to be doing, but uh I think I need to do this because, uh, you know, uh, I do want to help T-Bunny out as much as I can. And he's one of the few that I have downloaded. But it always winds up as my thumbnail. Oh, well. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand Watch we here coming. idle? Hey, Shadowhawk. What is it the gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear? Or peace so sweet? It has to be purchased so at the price of chains well, I hope and we'll slavery? People coming in here to promote their comics tomorrow. Forbid it all like it. Not, we'll have a good time anyway. Preston still hasn't gotten back with me. I guess he totally forgot about yesterday. I don't know. We forget him. That's for me. Yeah, we'll let it slide this time. This time. <laughs> 
Christ. Give me liberty. We can be dissed at least once. Don't give me death. Well. We're not as high strong as, say, T-Bunny or Eric and Boyd or some of these others. <laughs> Sorry. Did you hear that thud as I threw him under the bus? Oh, my. Enough of that. What's going on, man? Oh, nothing, man. Sorry, I was a couple minutes late there. I had the damn delivery driver uh pulled up to the door right as I was getting married to, to jump on StreamYard. Well, you and, know what uh, I've said. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Eric>. <laughs> That's strong. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, me. Uh, yeah, can you believe we're uh, episode 599? We're just almost there. I know, man. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Almost there, Anything. folks. Almost there. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? I'll be sending out the links to the, the, the you know, everyone. I don't know. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? One of my favorite things. <laughs> you know, I mean, if that little girl, I'm trying to be nice. Um, you know, if she left us with anything, at least she left us with that, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. The thing that keeps on giving. <laughs> but you know what? Uh I would rather I'd never heard it. I mean, she just uh, <coughs> well, well I, I don't know. She's a useful pawn as well as her parents and others yeah, like um, her, you know. Uh, yeah, I I I guess. Have you um, have you ever replaced uh, books because the Marvel value stamp was cut out, or did was yours kind of like all original, or did you? Hey, Be hey, Justin, hey, Belmont. Um, I got a few like in when I picked up, you know, like other people's collections and stuff, or like uh, oh. garage sale finds, stuff like that, that uh, had them cut out. But yeah, I, I unless it was like you know a super uh, like like an important X-Men issue I was missing or something like that. I never went looking for another one, really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as long as you have it to read, right? Mm hmm Yeah, and as long as... Because a lot of times, too, when, the, when she cut the value stamp out, though, it would cut out part of a page. You know, so you didn't get to read the whole story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes it does interfere with the page, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, right. I wanted yeah. to start. I wanted to. One thing I wanted to start out with was talking about this. You know, with lizard representation. Okay. Why did that switch? What's that? What and right when I'm getting ready to do it, it's, uh, oh, like I said, the best plans of mice and man. Tell yeah, you what. Oh, uh, we'll get we'll get that to, to that in a minute. I, I can share this. It was back in August twelfth that I I just found this posting. Is that it? Mm, no. Mm. Sorry, take that one down. No. Uh, let's see. Okay. Right. Uh, Pacific Comics Companion. By Stephen Freed, uh, Fr Fr Fridit, I guess. I don't know. And John D. B. Cook. Uh, hmm. Okay. Shares the story of the meteoric rise of the Sh Shane's Brothers, California based imprint Pacific Comics, which uh, published <laughs> such legends as Jack Kirby, uh, Sergio Argonas, Steve Dicko, Neil Adams, Mike Grell, Bernie Wrightson, and Dave Stevens. Hmm. From its groundbreaking 1981 arrival in the fledgling direct market uh, sales market to a catastrophic, catastrophic, uh, precipitous fall after only four years, that was really sad. It really <laughs> was sad. I, uh, the yeah, Pacific yeah. Comic Companion reveals the inside saga as told to, uh, Print by Bill and Stephen Shanes. 
uh, David Scroggy and many of the creators themselves. It also focused on the tales of the amazing array of characters they introduced to an unsuspecting world, including the Rocketeer, Captain Victory, Miss Mystic, Grew the Wanderer, Star Slayer, and many more. Written with the editorial assist of Esner Award-winning historian John B. Cook, this retrospective is the most comprehensive study of an essential uh, publisher in the development of the creator's rights movement. Main cover illustrations by Dave Stevens, which is Rocketeer. September yep. the ships November 2023. That's from uh, uh, www.tomorrows.com. You can probably find a copy of it. Uh, 160 pages, uh, uh, color soft cover, $29.95. Digital edition, only $15.99 for wow. 160 pages. Um, That's not bad. Uh oh. Oh, well, Doc's in the back there. Uh, well. yeah. Breaking news, Jonathan Majors, Kang the Conqueror, has been found guilty on two out of the three charges against him. I didn't know he had charges against him. Yes, indeed so. Oh. Hmm. I think stalking <laughs> and... Sorry about that. It's either ha harassment, stalking, and assault, or some variation there. Well, yeah, where do they get these nut bars? Uh, you know, where do they pick them? Uh, apparently, uh, they're pickers. Uh, how's it going, fellas? How y'all are? Pretty good. Can't complain. Our Doing good, fine, uh, Doing good. Sorry about that. <laughs> Doc, oh. did you ever read Foom or find Foom in the 1970s? Uh, this seems like I read Foom. Wasn't, didn't they run Foom in Crack Magazine at one point? Mm. Could hmm. be. I didn't I didn't buy enough Maybe. crack to... Crack <laughs> <laughs> was never I'm a really crack. I'm into head. the crack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hear it really took off there in the late 80s. <laughs> uh, thank you for that, uh, Eric. Always looking for, at my diction very closely. That's that's cool. Hey, um, don't be looking at my diction. <laughs> well, you know, I have went by back and collected some of those phones. Not all of them. This is not my collection. I think I've. I might have the one on the left with the thing. I'm not sure. Uh, I remember Foom. I just don't remember where I remember it from. Well, it sense. was before I started collecting. Now I did. I, th I believe I've got the Jack Kirby on the left. Um, that's John Basima, the Conan on the right. Uh, I do have the Stan Lee one there, uh, number seventeen. Tell the viewers what Foom is slash was. <coughs> Foom was like a friends of. Mary Marvel or something. It was, I forget what it stood for, but it was Friends of Old Marvel. Friends of Old Marvel. Okay. Oh, okay. And yet yeah, they got Star Wars on the cover there. That's not Old Marvel. That was New Marvel at the time. Yeah. What's up, Justin? Good to see you, my Just friend. Saying. Good to see you, Eric. But I, yeah, I never did see oh, Foam. Uh, Howdy, Eric. Never did see foam. Here, here's an issue here, uh, Doc. I, I might, I've seen it, number sixteen. This is kind of like the Marvel bullpen bulletin. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, I don't up, know if you know what cartoonists they got to do that cover, but uh, pretty neat. Hmm. Oh, yeah, how I it, wanted one of those cubicles as a young man. Oh, I found a book that I I I, I need to get uh, eventually. Uh, if you look, if you look right there, hey, Timothy, it's a pretty girl sketchbook that's from AC Comics, signed by Bill Black. Uh, I have two of those signed by him that I bought. Uh, but that is, uh, I believe, a Frank Miller cover. 
I did not know that he did more than that one shot. Apparently, uh, here's one that he did with John Byrne on the oh, cool. all right, then. That's I did not know this was out here from Paragon Press. Uh, before he had a IC Comics, he was Paragon. Since the early right. 30s, he worked with people just up and coming like uh, uh, Jim Starenko did some work for him in the right. early 70s. Hey, Gabe. Uh, What's up, buddy? Very early hey, independent. Mr. Hey, Gabe. In the house. hey, Timothy. Timothy Yeltsin. Yeah, yeah. Gabe rolled money shot. We got the usual suspects in the house today. Hello, boys. Hello, boys. <laughs> Good. Always good. To so see apparently you. he did a couple, you know, a couple of those pretty girl, you know, things. Kevin Freeman that I got these from, he's got like, or yeah, had at it's, the time, uh, like it's a, it's a crazy idea, Rex. But for some reason, if you put a really pretty girl on just about anything, you can sell it for more it's, money. It sells. It, it, it's oh, weird. Yeah. I well, don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I, I kind of. I, I won't say I refuse to do that at Momentum Comics, but I, yeah, I think a I'll lot of people. It. Oh hell, I'll, I'll I'll stoop that low in a heartbeat. But it's gonna suck. Okay, well, I didn't even get copies. my thought out, and I was undercut. So moving on, oh, motherfucker, <laughs> one bitch. <laughs> uh, oh shit. Well, I mean, I just right think it's low hanging fruit, Doc. Uh, you know, everybody some will see these. Like, Rex, oh, some of them are firm. Girl. Okay, I can't right, give up. <laughs> some of them hang low. Some of them are firm and perky. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think that's a record. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome oh. to Doc's Coffee Shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doc, how you been? Oh, shit. <laughs> Ain't I a stinker? <laughs> <laughs> you, sneaky little, you sneaky little booger. <laughs> you damn you, you coot. <laughs> <laughs> you know Yo, what that's coot. from, right? We'll uh, put okay. sexy women on the cover. Yeah, that's uh, low hanging fruit. I know. I'm just saying, that's a, you know. Uh, that's easy say? to lean uh, into, Doc. You know, everybody's soft thinks, to lean into. Huh? They're soft yeah. to lean into. Yeah. Uh. Okay. I just <laughs> like to see a comic that doesn't, you know, always have to use the cheesecake to try and sell it, you know. I mean, that's okay, you know, to work that in there, but, you know, just to. I think a lot of people are like, yeah, we'll just put a sexy woman on the cover and they'll buy it. Uh, it's like, I don't, I don't really you know, care about that. I want a good story. You know what Stephen, what's his name said about a good premise? creating Lady Death? He was asked, what inspired you to create Lady Death? He said, who doesn't Brian love? Polito? No, the Stephen, what's his name that drew it? Uh, uh, Stephen Hughes. Yeah. He said, who doesn't love a big boob woman? Big boob blonde. Well, there are a few people that don't. I'm, 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 I'm in that camp. I, I mean, I do like big, big boobs. Uh, I but, like big boobs, and I cannot lie. I, uh, you know, uh, sorry, I'm in the opposite camp. I, I, I like petite and brunette. My see there, redhead. see, he proved my point exactly. Still Not cheesecake. everybody. Still but, cheesecake. You know. Still a hottie on the cover. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's all oh, that oh, is. That's yeah. why. I mean, I know that Death Metal Hero. That's probably his favorite character because it's got a big kind of metal feel. Whatever. I. I mean, I've. I have a few of the stuff things. I. You know, the comics. I had some stuff in my original collection, but I never read them. It never really. You know. Now, I, I'm, I'm probably going to get a big argument for Billy Tucci. Right. Yes, you because, will. I mean, she is just. I. I but see, if I, 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 it, I don't look at just, she. She has cheesecake. style. She has. He's put a lot of thought into that character. You know. Yeah, she and, is not. She is not overly developed or exposed. You know. Well, I mean, you don't have to be just. <laughs> I'm just saying, she's not. Coming. 
Now there was a cover, and it was yeah, either Frank, I mean, Frank Miller without being overly, you know. No, it was, it Eric, was either, that doesn't explain why I gave you grief. If you want me to lie, I will. I mean, I just gave right. you my honest opinion. Rex, yeah. shut up. You guys are collectors. There was a Daredevil, Daredevil cover. It was white, and it had bullseye on front with a cord mm-hmm. wrapped around uh, Natasha Romanoff's slumping yep. body around her right. neck. Yeah. I remember is, that. Uh, Black Widow. Who... who Drew that cover first of all. I think that was yeah. during the that was John uh, Miller. Burton. John was that Burton? Burton? Okay. Yep. Because I I know that was close to the Miller run around that time. That uh but. that co- that cover made me feel certain things. I do not, Eric. <laughs> I do not think you're incapable. <laughs> something in my pants are tight. It, it made me feel certain things. <laughs> Well, you know, I like the Tatas just like, but I'm like, you know, I would, I, I'm kind of sus that people that go to that well right off dock, you know, that just like, all right, I want to see the Tatas on the cover or whatever. And it's like, no, I just want a good story. I want a good characterization. I want what if you can do both? You can okay. do both. Absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, and, and, and you everybody know, sort is of, doing you know, it pretty much at least one you know variant cover anymore on on campaigns so why not make one of them a little sexy can't hurt i i I can't disagree with what you're saying shadowhawk i'm just saying that so many people go to that to i get it if that's i I mean it's it's just so repetitive again and again it's like wow i just if i I see some of this offer Rex, then I would huh? agree with you. If that's all you've got to offer. As yeah, and I feel like, I mean, I you know, show you. me something different than that. That doesn't impress me. I mean, now when Dave Stevens did it, Doc, it always impressed me, you know, but not everybody can do his cheesecake looked well thought out and well executed and was always intriguing. Well, yeah, it didn't look like he like just uh, you know grabbed a life model from like a uh, hustler magazine or something. So, uh, but uh, I mean, there are tasteful should be here, ways should to be here do seven, it. Should be here at seven. But, so, yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, there are very tasteful ways to still do a sexy cover. And just yeah. for your information, right? So you may not have read many of those bad girl titles back in the day, but there were quite a few that were actually good. Uh, Jimmy Pomiati and Amanda Connor put out Painkiller Jane back then. Uh, she, of that. course, uh, actually, Lady Death gets a lot of crap for just being all boobs and, and hair, but uh, stories yeah. were pretty damn good back in the early days. All right. uh, Razor, hey, uh, that's another one that he's uh, got a hey, new Karen. campaign coming out. What was uh, that other one? Good. I didn't hear it. Razor. Razor, Razor yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't like uh, Mark Wire. Barbed Wire, no, I didn't care for the writing on that one. I just didn't think it was that good. Um, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I how, how many people do you see? Like Eric says, I hear what you're saying, Rex, but you may be a bit hung up on it. Well, maybe it seems like it because nobody else is out there criticizing all the cheesecake. It's like, and I see a lot of it, you know, uh, out there. And it's like... Uh, you well, know, even nothing. the new, it's not like even it's the, something new, right? Even the even the <laughs> variants, you know, where they have they're topless, where you can see nips. I mean, with no clothes on or Hello, nude Ms. variants it's and tough. stuff like that. It's like that. Really, I that doesn't intrigue me in the least. To you know, but then I'm not one of those that have to get my jollies off all the time. You know, hey, Mrs. Uh, good yeah. stuff. Hell, that's good stuff. Good to see you, though. I mean, if that intrigues you, if that's your thing, then, you know, uh, more power to you. I mean... I'm I'm just saying, you know, I did... Art has been around for since people have been around. Right. And uh, male and female artists have been drawing the female form since art's been around. So, well, thank you for uh, that history lesson. 
I mean, I, I, you can complain all you want to, but it's going to be something people go back to over and over and over again. And I, I will, I, I'm not saying that I won't dip in that well, but not continuously, you know, like, well, I do. God, there it people, looks there so, people, like so much fluff. It looks there like are guys, you know, there are artists out there that have made very nice livings for themselves. I'm just not, I, not I'm not disputing uh, that, Shadowhawk. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it's like, can we have some substance with our cheesecake? I, I'm not arguing with you about that. I'm just saying. Yeah. You yes. know, if, if, if you're but trying I to immediately, sell, immediately from both of you and the chat, I get pushback. If you even talk about, ooh, maybe we don't need to sexualize everything in comics. I immediately I Get the got, counterpoint and the discussion over. I got a, uh, <laughs> which I don't mind, but it's just like, can you guys? I, I, like I mean, Doc wouldn't even let me finish my statement. You know, I had to oh. kick myself, you know. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, well, I got a commitment I got to go to, guys. I got to bounce. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. All right. Love you, Doc. Care, Have a good night, brother. Peace out, guys. Love, love, chat. Okay. Enough about that rant. I'm just saying, you know, uh, yeah, I see a lot out there like that. Look at that. Just comes in here, stirs up crap, and then bails out on me. All right, I see how you are. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, now Rex is going to be on my ass for the rest of the show. No, no, I'm not going to be on your ass. I'm just, I'm making a point or trying to make a point. And okay. So everybody no, wants I, just uh, lascivious, you know, whatever. Okay, I got it. Nobody okay. said that, right? You always go, you go to the fucking extreme. <laughs> Jesus God, man! I'm well, just saying that there is nothing I'm just wrong making with my point. <laughs> right, but there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of cheesecake. I'm yeah, if that's all you got, and there's no Forgive substance. Me, I'm being to, if there's no substance to your story, there's no yeah. other anything that you have to offer other than the ability of you to draw a hot chick on the cover every month. Then it'll solve the problem. Will solve itself. Because hand looks fine. eventually, even the perverts are going to stop buying it because there's no story, right? Yeah. So you know, I, I would have thought that, but Gable Penny shot because I've heard him make some comments, you know, uh, when it comes to Helinski's books or whatever, you know, uh, and it may not just be the uh, about the women. I understand that the derivative thing. I get it. Uh, Miss Good well, Stephens. I mean, look at, look at Boob Dan with Goblin Girl. I mean, they call him, I mean, his nickname is Boob Dan, for God's sake. But, yeah, I mean, the guy's got an amazing style, and I, right, I haven't read Goblin Girl yet because it's not out, but I have a feeling it's I, probably going to be a pretty cool it'll story. Have some substance to it. Yeah, I think it'll be cool. And Clint, and I'm sorry, man, he's. Yeah, well, I'm not pointing fingers. Clint Holinsky, you know, the, he, he's interesting. I thought I would bring up one can, example. I have no draw problem them. with Clint. In fact, I back his last no. book. But he can draw in a bunch of different styles, all of all of them very well, from what I've seen. Yeah, and when yeah. He, and when he chooses to draw hot ladies, he does a, a wonderful job. I was surprised, oh, really, and I know it was the money thing that you didn't get in on the superiors thing. I barely did. He had actually closed the campaign, but, you know, it takes a while for them to take it down. Yeah. And so yeah. I got in, like, at the last minute, probably, with that, the last few hours, you know. Yeah, that was uh, during, I, I had, well, it, you, I don't you know. remember, I had a little, uh, a little financial rough patch back there at the beginning right. of the year. And Right. So I wasn't really back in a whole lot of stuff. Um, I'm still not back to the level I used to be at, but I'm, I'm back in a lot more now. Well, uh, as I was saying, uh, you know, I was looking at Kevin Freeman's and I actually started following him on Twitter. He's got, or, or had, uh, like 70 slab, and he's like, where do people keep all these they take up a lot of room yeah that's longer than a long box and you only got 70 books there slabbed so they do take up a lot of room uh you can they do make i do have two cgc graded boxes that are wide enough to keep them in but if you've got like graded magazines they won't fit in there those things are wide and huge 
They won't even sit, fit in a rated slab box. So that's right. the problem. And I do have, I don't have a bunch of them, but I've got about maybe a half dozen or less, you know, around here, different places. Um, Japan has a, ooh, I'm not reading that. <laughs> I, uh, All right. uh, Eric and Gable, I, I've heard both of these arguments. And uh, again, I, I will give you um, probably, yeah, he's not the most original on his layouts. He probably, um, you know, uses reference on a lot of his panel shots for layouts and things like that. I, I don't believe he's actually traced anything. I, I've i not seen anything to prove. Yes, I know. I just didn't want to say it. That he was tracing anything. So, But, I mean, if, if somebody has something out there that proves it, uh, dude, uh, there again, you're only hurting yourself if you're doing that kind of crap because somebody's going to notice. Somebody's going to find out, especially nowadays. And right. then, you know, and then people start shitting on you on the internet. So well, that <laughs> was uh, that was a criticism with uh, land, right? I think that he was. Yeah, but I think they pretty well proved that he's fucking <laughs> just tracing shit like right out of like Sports Illustrated. Right, shit, that's what I'm it. saying. You know, eventually you're gonna get. Was it land? I don't know that. Was I, it land? Was it land? I I don't I don't want I don't want to. Wasn't Adam here? Well, we don't know him, you know. So whatever. Well, it don't matter. I still don't want to disparage an artist if he didn't. No, I don't either. I'm just, I'm just asking, you know, who was the controversy? I, I, I remember it was somebody new and popular. That's all I know. Nobody, nobody I've ever had my collection. Um, one of the newer, more popular guys, apparently. Um, but yeah, apparently, like every. Everything he does, he steals. So I, you know, I Helensky, You know, I think that's his artwork, right? For superiors and yeah, uh, and, why, I mean, and, and like the pirate female pirate book, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I I think he's a good artist. Now, you know, when it comes to originality, uh, you know, I maybe he's heavily into comics and uses you know a lot of the what we call tropes or whatever i don't know i mean not ever yeah i believe it was greg land uh clint did a cyber frog pinup months ago and, and if you superimpose the head over evs it's almost an exact match yeah so i i don't know some artists uh yeah i do remember need that uh, to me it's to me, I would rather try and reinvent the wheel. I don't think, I think there are, you know, if you get into good enough at your trade, there's different things that you can do to as shortcuts, but first learn your trade. And that's just the, 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 you know, school of hard knocks, if you ask me, but now that saying some people actually have some talent and can far outshine what I can do and other artists. And, and sometimes Though when you have talent very early on, you tend not to challenge yourself, you know, and you're some, I, I've seen some very talented artists that just didn't stick with it because I guess it wasn't challenging to them anymore. Um, I guess. Yeah. Hot uh, here was a flip through. Now, like I said, I'm going to be on uh, John's long box. This was actually the book. I think this was the book. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Could, could that may be. Uh, no, I think it was actually 10. Is that a low a beast is more? Okay, so this was it. Yeah, number 11. Gil Kane cover. Um, <clears throat> Ray Beast. Uh, this, this is just a flip through uh, by the gentleman that I mentioned, Kevin. Uh, of the comics that he unslabbed. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. There we go. So he starts with the Amazing Adventures 11. Oh, that's a good oh wait. That's this, he's, un he's Oh, I love this guy. <laughs> you, what? That he's right. First that book out and fucking read it, man. That's what it's yeah. there for. And you can see yeah. right here on the back, he's kept the old uh, strips that say what it grades. And he probably got them in Mylar's. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, that's a good book right there. Now Avengers number seven with, uh, I mean, so cosmic, uh, you know, Avengers. I'm telling you, I mean, if I got it, if I got it, uh, Hulk 181, right? Like yeah. one in a contest, uh, 9.5 graded copy in a fucking slab. You know what the first thing I'm doing with that is? I'm cracking it open and I'm reading it because I've never actually held a, a, a original first print copy of that book in my hand. And I'm going to read that fucking thing. Right. It's now, my- if you have a 10.0 <laughs> and you unslab it, I think you're foolish. Unless it's if, just if it's a book. if it's a ten point oh, then I'm immediately putting that bitch up for sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know one of the I forget I'm what not, it was. It might have been Graham really Nolan. Good. It might have been some other, but there was a gentleman get a ten point oh. You know when they backed the slab books because some yeah, campaigns dude. have slab books. Can you dude, imagine a that when of, it comes uh, back a ten point oh hmm. and it goes out to somebody? A couple of Shane Davises on his last campaign, he was doing slabbed uh, books on that new one. Yeah, and uh, uh, I think Jim's... he sent out like he sent out like fifty books. They all came back nine point six or higher. He had one ten. Well, red, like, fresh from the printers, you're more likely to. Nobody's handled them, yeah. you know. And Jim's like, and I think he had like seven or eight, like nine point nines. I didn't even know they did a nine point nine. Oh, I thought it always went by increments of two, but <laughs> apparently they, they do nine point nine. I didn't know. Now I but believe yeah. I, I believe that's a Barry Win. Let's go back to that one. I believe is that Jack Kirby or or Barry Windsor Smith. It could very well be uh, Barry Windsor Smith and his Jack Kirby uh, days you know, when he looked a lot like Jack Kirby. Those Jack hands Kirby. look off. They look very Kirby like, but yeah. not quite as like flat. You know, like square as Kirby used to do. Right. Let me yeah, actually I'm, look I'm, that one up. That's that's Captain America number one. Let's see. I'm guessing you might be right. That might that might be Barry doing Jack's style. I think it's know? Barry Windsor Smith, but I'll make sure. Captain America number what was that number? Uh, Forty three. I, I gotta blow it up again. I know I, I had that at one time. I don't think I do <clears> anymore. Uh, I'll see who. I don't think I ever one. had this one. I'm curious. Uh, 1968 on that. Oh yeah, no, I don't. I've never had this one. <laughs> uh, okay. Ooh. Let me see if I can. Cable finish. Hashtag unslab all comics. That's right. Freedom for comics. Hey, okay. Good to Come see you guys. On. Didn't notice you slipping. No, that's Jack Kirby and and, uh, probably I can't tell the inker, but that's Jack Kirby cover. No, I was wrong. Is it Kirby? Huh? That's interesting then, because I thought for sure the hand was a giveaway, but I don't know. Of course, Neil Adams there on his short run of Green Lantern. Oh, I, I got a few of those. Yeah, I've got a few of them. Yeah. Oh, now that that right there had uh, the vice president on there. Bef- that came in before uh, he was replaced, Spiro Agnew. No, oh. for for Richard Nixon. So Spiro right. Agnew right. on the cover, drawn by <laughs> Neil Adams. There have never been politics in comic books, Rex. Right, I've been seeing a lot of postings on that recently. You mm-hmm. know. Going all the way back to oh look at that one back that up that that had the X Men. That's what she said. Fist fifteen. Oh that's, damn! Uh, oh, yeah, that's that's Dave Cockrum cover, but I think on the inside it's John Byrne early X Men. I think I'm not sure. Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good one. Fucking uh, double your double your pleasure. Oh, he's double got your some good. He's got he's got some good. And these journey into mysteries are worth some money. Definitely. I don't know who this guy is, but I love him. Yeah. <laughs> I actually looked at this, you know, buying this copy, this kid code outlaw at one time. But didn't you uh, just do a trade with Dillard a while back for a kid Colt? 
Yes. Number 11. Yeah, that's I right. probably lost out on that deal, to tell you the truth. Now, that, I think this Mockingbird... Well, Megan Jar, you know the cover the cheap bastard. I think that's a Frank Miller cover right there, that, <laughs> that team up. I'm pretty and where's sure. he been really, anyway? What's the, uh, the, oh, shit, he had some kind of disaster at the hey, house. busy. Dude. Oh, yeah, busy with that. Oh, look at that. He had a new Teen Titans. I wonder what that graded at. Let's see. 9.4. Oh, that's a horrible cover. That, I think that's... Uh, Looking at the style, that is, uh, I do not like that at all. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> do that, not like that at all. <laughs> that's Gene Colon, though. Guarantee is it? You that's Gene Colon. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Do you like that cover? I've never seen yeah. that. That's awful. That's awful. No, yeah. That might be, it, that it, might be it, the it, last it, issue of Rawhide Kid because it says Final Saga? Question <laughs> mark. Might be the final yeah, issue. The for it. I guess it's it. But yeah, I do not like that. You know, Gil Kane cover. That's just maybe it's the yellow background. I I, I just don't like how he's depicted in the face. And hey, hey, uh, Kate. Yeah. I, uh, Hashtag yeah, unslab uh, all comics. Well, like I said <laughs> over there, if you, it, Shadowhawk, if you had. Thing. An action comic nu number one slabbed, you'd be a fool to unslab it. I know. And uh, again, right? certain, certain comics, uh, if I had an amazing fantasy 15, action comics number one, right? Uh, uh, the uh, new X Men, what was it, number 128, whatever it was, the first uh, issue, I think it was 128. Uh, you know, yeah, there's Seems certain like ones. If I had a nine point eight or a ten slab, I'm not. I don't even care because at that point, I'm just gonna flip it and make money for it on the market. Oh, I had that one, number two of Silver Server. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm not saying that I wouldn't unslab some of the ones that I have, especially. Oh, there you go. There's the Beatles issue where the thing in the. Uh... But I do. I I guarantee you. Like, what's the. Uh... <clears throat> the werewolf by night that blew up recently was it number 32 or something like that i think that's like going yeah. for ridiculous prizes i've never read it if i got that i don't care if it was a 9.8 or not i'm i'm not selling that one it's going in my collection and i'm I, fucking I suggest breaking you get the marvel essentials uh, and I i'm breaking it out essentials. of that plastic tomb and reading I have read it read every all 43 issues of werewolf by night I made that a priority because Werewolf by Night was my first comic book, comic sized comic book, you know, and he was kind of like a precursor to the beast because, you know, early on, I love that monster stuff, Shadowhawk. Yeah, I mean, that's why I, I mean, feel like yeah, I'm in comics, you know. I mean, you know my history, bro. I just, you know, Morbius, fucking uh, Werewolf Ramp by Night. Swamp, Swamp Thing, Man Thing, Tomb of Dracula. If it had a monster on the cover, you know, I would grab it. Ranko. <laughs> yeah. Love that cover with the human top. That's cool. I love those Tales to Astonish and stuff with Giant Man. And that's a great one, too, there, where he's, like, laying there up close after he changed his outfit. So, you know, there are people out there liberating. There's Galactus. Love that. See, the outline of Galactus, very effective. Very cool, man. On that cover. You know, nice I love that. negative space. Yeah, and then there's John Byrne with the vision, uh, kind of with an homage to John Basima's old mm -hmm. Avengers cover. Yep, I remember this one. The white, you know, I, I figured that, in the movies, when Vision comes back, he's going to be all white like this. You think they might do that? Yeah, they might. Yeah, I mean, there's been speculation when the you know Thanos takes his gemstone and basically destroys the Vision. Yeah, yeah. Y you know, yeah. when they show him X-rayed or whatever, he's got muscle mass. It may be synthetic mu muscle. Uh, that shit will rot yeah. your brain. What what will pass, Master Dan? How you doing? Well, he's a synthesoid. Remember, he's not like Ultron. He wasn't a, a robot. He's a, a synthetic. Oh, there being. you go. Where creatures roam. Look! Look at that one. 
number three. <laughs> now, now I have a copy of that one, number three, where the uh, Easter Island. Uh, oh, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. Got that one. This is the type of stuff that Elsie likes. I have that one too with Goop. Number oh, seven. Oh yeah. Oh, this is dude. This is oh, kind of stuff I loved when I when I was a kid. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, look at that! He had a slab kitty pride. Yeah. Oh. Holiday yeah, kitty baby. pride. Yeah, but uh, that's a great story too. If you haven't I read that, that one, off the stands. comics and general cracks will rot your brain. Okay. Right. Yeah, that uh, I, Kitty Pride uh, we Christmas here. issue, <laughs> man, was, uh, like uh, that's still one of my favorites, man. Claremont was a master. Still Monday is, morning, no. more like Ouch. Monday morning, the death of my happiness. <laughs> 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 Uh, they did a white ver version, uh, a white vision for the WandaVision show. I never, never saw it, but I know about it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they might have. Uh, I think that's a precursor. I mean, they, they're not going to do away with the. Uh, they're not going to do away with. Uh, with the vision. Uh, apparently they're re they're doing uh, upcoming Edgar's uh, Nosferatu uh, with William Defoe in there, which is oh got cool. a, kind of a London after midnight feel. Here's here's actually a steal with William Defoe in that. Well, that sounds like a great. I love William Defoe, man. That dude's well, nuts. you know, he already did one <laughs> in the early nineties, right, where he played. Uh, where he was playing sort of Nosferatu. Do you remember mm, that? I, don't, I think you're thinking of uh, somebody Eric else. Says he seriously doubt there will be any more MCU movies. Yeah, there will be. Hi, Eagle. Yeah, the only thing that uh, pisses me off about the white vision thing lately yeah. is I've been wanting to find uh, very few Marvel figures that I like, right? But there's a couple that I want. And mm -hmm. one is classic Moon Knight, you know, full cape and all that. And then Mr. Knight, where he's just like, he's got the suit on and all that. When he like was no more re refrained, uh, restrained, but still fucking completely violent Moon Knight. Uh and every time I see the all-white figure with the cape in one of the used toy stores, I go, ah, Moon Knight, finally. And I go over there, and it's the freaking white vision. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was never a fan of the white vision, really. Look, that Burn, I th think Burn introduced it. What do you got to say? Yeah, I forget, I forget why. What, wasn't there a reason why he, like, turned white or something? Like, he was recovering from something or uh, yeah, London I, I, After Midnight is a lost classic by Lon Chaney Sr. Uh, dude, I'd that's the one that gave me nightmares for years when I was a kid, and I never even got to see the movie. But they used a picture of Lon Chaney in the makeup as the right. uh, when they were going to commercial breaks. And just that picture of him that they used gave me fucking nightmares when I was a kid. <laughs> All right, don't ignore the lizard that I'm showing now. Uh I didn't know that this gecko could do that, uh, or that any gecko could do this. This is pretty wild. Uh, here's your lizard representation. I wanted to start the show with this, Lorenzo, but hey, you know, you know, I thank you, Twitter, for you know filing it under unfindable for a while. Is that thing uh, firing but, webs? What the hell's going on? No, uh, actually, uh, the story on that is that's the golden-tailed gecko is known to shoot a sticky, foul-smelling substance from its tail when threatened. The brown-yellow liquid is harmless, but the smell is described by various scientists as nasty-smelling. Oh, so it's like a, a lizard version of a skunk. It's like a skunk lizard, yeah. It's a punk. 
Wait, no, a lunk. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> Whatever. Sure. It's kind of like the pillard. By the way, Carrie, thank you so much for turning me on to that. That was hilarious if you're in there in the chat. And here's a you know, <laughs> classic from Bancroft. Here's the other thing to remember about pop culture, okay? The people who like Star Wars, the people who like Dungeons & Dragons, the hey, people who like video games and comic books, nice. these are smart people. So the culture that they're taking in is vital. This is a battleground. What we teach our boys, what we teach our smart, exceptional, special boys. Oh, wow, cool. It's important. Are we teaching them the masculine version of Thundercats? Or are we showing them the Cal Arts soy based pussy version of Thunder Thank you, Cats? Care for dropping. Are we mocking That's masculinity or are we cherishing it? We're making it look world. cool. Yeah. We're giving these boys yeah. something to aspire to. That's what all of this stuff means. These are the things that actually shape our ideas of what it means to be a man. And if these social justice warriors, these soy boys can get in there and they can monkey with it and they can change it and they can make it embarrassing to be a man. If they can demasculinize and de-penis Luke Skywalker, oh put him in a bathrobe <laughs> as a failure, somebody who gives up and literally sucks on sea monster tit instead of fighting the first order, which is what he should be doing. What kind of message does that send to our boys? He didn't get enough love for grow up mom. without Luke Skywalker. How are boys supposed to grow up if Batman is sitting there whining about Selena Kyle all day long? Boys don't have the role models that they used to have because the most incredibly depressed, mentally Preach ill heroes have taken complete control of our pop culture and they're ruining it. You want to pump out more soy boys that look like Will Wheaton? This is the inevitable <laughs> result of all of this. This is where we're going. This is why we fight so hard. These boys need heroes. They need masculine role models. They need heroes, people who don't sit around and cry and mope and whine, people who put themselves last, who put heroism, their country first. It's so important. I know it seems silly to cry about Captain Marvel or Star Wars or The Last Jedi. You can't stop until they change what they're doing, until they wake up and realize that they're destroying people. They're taking away our balls. Our boys are growing up to be pussies because they don't know any better. They're afraid of offending these blue-haired land whales on social media. They're afraid. <laughs> and no, now, you know why I love my boy. Proje <laughs> Past Master Dan says projection. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to do. Uh, yeah, Carrie said, oh, Preston just got back with me. Let's see what Preston's got to say for himself. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Yo, brother, oh I'm so sorry. It's rough at the moment with the holiday and the wife had me doing shit this weekend. Let me know. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, Preston didn't show up last week. Uh, it's, I mean, last week. Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> uh, Unforgettable. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> just to even Preston. Love you, brother. We'll, we'll get together after the holidays. It's busy for everybody. Unless you have free time next week because I got like 10 days off. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you're not the only one, so. Yeah, I, I think we'll have, we'll have plenty of people with time off to jump in. I saw you painting your dragon eagle. It's awesome. Uh. Do that. Let's see. Right here's good what luck getting, getting the paint between those legs. <laughs> oh, oh God! Wow! Uh, hit that like button, everybody. If you hadn't, uh, <laughs> six six of uh, the faithful there have uh, the rest of you. Well, not so much. Lazy. Uh, I mean, uh, we love you, and please hit the like. <laughs> wow okay all right i see you there eagle hello 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 What's oh, up, wow. Rosetta? oh yeah baby that's how i doing this working. earlier that's cool uh Not what is the obviously what is the material that that's made out of this was a broken resin statue I got, that i rescued to okay. rebuild and then just a lot of acrylic paint layers to create the effects over all the stain damaged plastics. <laughs> right. 
And Swat. with with typical Shadowhawk timing, I tuned in while she was painting his taint earlier. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. The scales and stuff, but I've got part of it done. <laughs> Interesting, it was man. funny because you're like, it's hard to get the brush down here between his legs. <laughs> well, now, how, what, kind, dirty. what kind of paint are right, you using on that? This is just acrylic. Okay, it's an interesting choice of like pastel colors <coughs> with code highlight. Technically, not quite pastel, they're closer right. to the earth tone, but it's pretty close. Trying to do kind of a uh, ethereal dragon with elements of grass and water in it. Can we mm. see the head? It yeah, it works nice. It, it works well, nicely okay. with the the gold oh, highlight. So far. Oh yeah, look at oh he's, and his eyes. Yet, are, but getting there. His eyes are gold be, too. Interesting. The eyes are going to be more detailed. I always do the eyes last so they can reflect the personality I got in the piece. I got it. But yeah, no, I, I I think the gold offsets the kind of sort of pastel -y colors very nicely. And by the time I dry brush in the silver highlights into the gold and do the chalk shadow lines and stuff like that, it's not it's gonna be more metallic than anything else, you know? Mm. Cool. Yeah, I love watching you I love watching process stuff like that. You know, you, you watch it, you know, go from a lump of clay or whatever to this amazing piece of work and it's just like so cool to watch five days and counting all so right far. shadow uh the new trailer for the chosen has dropped so i guess we can watch this huh uh thank you carrie like, for pointing i guess so it only dropped a few uh, <laughs> uh, hours ago puce that has always been my most unfavorite name for a color ever this is the trailer for season four of The Chosen. I believe they're going to have a release in the movies. Um, I don't know. Maybe this will, we'll see. All okay. right, Carrie, do I need to ask you what you were, were doing with those scissors, Missy? My main colors are sage green and sky blue, actually, but. And puce. No. Nope. <laughs> I know. I just, I hate the, I, I, that's like, for me, that's like when girls hear moist or, uh, oh uh, man, am I going to give up today or what? Probably. Uh, all right. I'm going to play this trailer. Here we go. Darkness is not the absence sure of light. Jesus, it's more uncontrollable. And sinister. You were there. This must be the full trailer. Waiting. Because the darkness. Because we've is seen a teaser trailer of this. At least. Not always. The coming darkness was too deep for us to grasp. It would appear that we now want the same thing as Pilate. Senior leaders in every district should question and expose Jesus. I just can't stop seeing how we could be doing things faster and more efficiently. That's you Judas. You deserve a stipend for your specialized work. You can at least make sure that you have resources to keep the mission going. My ledgers are in the red. I told you to make life difficult for the followers of Jesus. It is on this rock that I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This infernal chaos. Why can no one control these people? What just happened to all of you? It's about to get worse. Now that I'm here, Physical death does not interrupt our eternal life. Lazarus, come out! I remember you wishing there could be another way. And looking back, I do too. I still don't know why it has to be this way. The bitter often mingled with the sweet. 
told us it would be like that. With how you lived. The man of sorrows. Acquainted with grief. Interesting. Hmm. So you did a broadcast where you're painting on that, huh? Amy never heard about that chosen. Eric, we've been do, doing a show on the chosen for a while now on Sunday. All right. <laughs> he says, I take that back. <laughs> well, I never know when Eric's playing around or not. It's hard to tell with that. Well, I mean, he might not have recognized it, you know. I, I don't know. But it was John Dillard that actually re recommended that to us. Uh, yeah, uh, amazingly enough, how about that? Dillard actually recommended us that show, which is I just, yeah. still. Well, I mean, fun. he's a professing <laughs> Christian. I mean, he doesn't go around, you know. No, but if up. you did, if but, you just ran into to Dillard in a typical stream, you you would never guess that he's sitting around on Sunday watching the chosen. I mean, I'm just saying. right. <laughs> Right. Uh, what you are probably you never, to... you probably never would guess that about me either. So I mean, I'm not saying nothing bad about it. It's just he, he is, he's not one of those guys that comes off as like overly like you know uh, religious. Oh wow, or... yeah, no, 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 Eric. Uh, you can go on YouTube and it's under I think just the chosen, and they probably had the first three. If not, you oh, can sure. go to Angels. I, I thought you were just playing, bro. No, that's a really good show, man. I've really been enjoying it. It's, it, I mean, yeah, it's a story everybody knows already, but they're doing an amazing job with it. So, yeah, well, I mean, there's actually been some criticism. I haven't really, you know, by some believers that you know things that they think they're leaving out or, but you get that with everything. Well, you know, when a new I mean, when a new thing comes out. Uh, well, and you gotta understand still too, with it doesn't matter if it's a TV show, a mini series, a fucking three hour movie. Right. There, there's gonna be editing that has Division. to be done to yeah. to move the story I was, along. I was gonna say, you know, anytime you're turning anything in text into a movie or a show, no matter how true you're trying to be to the original stuff. Something's yeah, still... going to get lost, and something's going to have to be filled in to make it make sense. It's just the nature of transference of media. Yeah, and so there's a difference between intentionally changing the stories versus trying to make it work in a new media. Right, and and some people, you know, d depending on the the writer, director, whatever whatever it may be, can pull that off very well. Other people just take a, a really, really good book that was like a, a number one bestseller and turn it into a piece of shit. Uh, it, it's just, I, I I don't know. It's, a, you know, it's a, just a matter of it's artistic. It's not for transferring media types. Yeah, it's, it's an artistic direction and maybe, a, you know, a bad choice is made here or there, what have you. Uh, and, then, and, and everything can be argued, right? Everybody's got an opinion, so movies that I hate, some people probably love. Uh, and vice versa. Well, I get teased that I hate everything because most of the stuff that's popular, even in popular in the nerd circles, I sit there and go, I don't care. So the hell well, is that I hate everything anyways, so. If, if it's anything since the year 2000 or so, then I'm most likely I agree with you. Um, <laughs> some of it is. And before somebody... before that, we would, we would have to go case by case, but <laughs> it's it's not even things. There's plenty of things where I also they're going. Yeah, I hate it. I'm not interested in it. I don't even think it's made badly. It's just not my style, you know. Yeah, and there's not and and see, and that's the other thing I get mad about too. The well, if you don't like this book, you know, then you're a racist. And you, uh, how about you know what? I don't read YA to start with. Um, it doesn't have anything about it that interests me, but yet if I don't go out and waste money on something I'm never going to pick up and read and just, you know, spend money on it, then I'm, like, 
some kind of racist or is well, or, or, or the ones that sit there and say or a that phobe or a, that I, uh, our own community is guilty of this where if you don't like this or that what well, you're not really a real geek or if you don't do this or that within this franchise you're not the real geek it's like yeah shut up should, that's not how it works it means, screw all that too. so what it doesn't mean i don't like the things i watch you know yeah but, but me and rex can tell you back in the day we had to walk around and pretend not to be geeks. You didn't want I know people what to, that era was you didn't like. You want people to know you, you like comic books and shit because you'd be getting in fights with fucking jacks all the time. Yeah, fucking. I know what that era was like. I'm not that yeah. young. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what I mean. Then. I, I went through a bunch of shit back in the day because I was a like comic Shadow, book How fan. old are you? 37. <laughs> I'll be 57 in March, dear. Okay. Yeah, right. So I'm getting up there. It's like, because the whole geek chic thing didn't really start happening until about a decade ago. So geek anybody who's chic. not like wow. 20s and younger, we remember the era when we were the ner nerds that people bullied, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, I remember Revenge of the Nerds and big giant furry fucking muscly guy just yelling, no! Not at all. I was only born in the early 80s. But my yeah, and you probably didn't get these McDonald glasses, did you? I did. Some of them. I didn't get those because I absolutely hate McDonald's and always have. Good for you. Good for you, though. Uh, the plastic I mean, trays have more, more nutrition of a than you know. fan, but to, I mean, really, they're no better. So, <laughs> I'm not a fan of fast food. Let's just put it that way. Uh, how's uh, do you, are you going to celebrate a big Christmas, uh, Eagle? Uh, me and hubby. Uh, I, I just try to celebrate day right after Christmas for the fortieth birthday, but I've never been very good at celebrating my birthdays because I've never been very good at having people notice them. So I don't know what I'm doing, honestly. Fortieth? Oh, damn, Eagle! It's all downhill from there, babe. Oh, honey, it's always been downhill with my health. <laughs> <laughs> Today in 1979, the Lego character known simply sorry, as I toy. So, so bluntly, but <laughs> that was when everything started going south for me. Today in 1979, the Lego character known simply as a toy figure was patented, completely with movable arms and legs. It suddenly introduced an entirely new dimension to the franchise. Faceless and following a basic human form at first, the toy figure soon acquired identities. Um, yeah, you could put a little construction hat on. And... <laughs> identities and professions so that they could enhance the multiple, uh, the multitude of theme products that were being introduced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What year was Just that again? A very simple little, you know. 1979. Wow. And that was the, that's so crazy. Hey, Lorenzo. Hello. I don't know. What's up, my lizardly friend? Uh, would a dragon be? I guess technically a dragon would be lizard as well, huh? Yeah. But that's dragon representation Welcome all the way, the guys. Multitude of dragon representation today. This one doesn't stink as much. And as you can actually see, I'm finishing up the work on the tail area there on that side before I finish next. Oh, the, the, uh, right. the smelly gecko. Okay. Oh. Yeah, the smelly gecko. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Shadowhawk? Uh, does that do it for you there, the VW? Uh, you can keep it like there for a minute so I, so I can look at it. Looks like wood yeah, panel. That's cool as hell. I drive that. that hell yeah. If that if that guy actually built that, I mean, that might just be a paint job to look like wood. Right. I'm guessing. Yeah, probably. Uh, but but it's a, a paint job because of the way it reflects. Yeah, yeah, I I am too. I I don't see. 
Well, there I mean, even there. if you did there it as wood, you there. would have to put a polymer or something over it to protect. Yeah, poly polymers and wood sealants don't reflect quite the same coloration as. Yeah. Well, well, there also, you go. Uh, Eagle Rider knows that's that's fine. And also, so, yeah. I'm a carpenter. If you look and, at the form, and carpenter. <laughs> if, if you look well, at the form of the hood, the there's, there's no attack. way you're you're gonna join those boards together into that shape. Oh, yeah. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, but it's still, so, it's still so actually it's still a cool, cool effect. It looks like gorgeous wood carved and intricate. Yeah, it's a I cool mean, effect. And those of us who have an expert eye to it can tell there's a few things off for it to actually be wood, but it's still cool. It's still yeah, still very cool. I I, I don't disagree there, but I think it would have been ultra cool if the guy would have actually made the the body out of wood. You know. Whoop, your audio amazing. kind of trailed off there. Uh, I don't know what it, this is. Maybe Eagle Rider can tell us. It's a baby it's woodpecker. Me, I think. It's a baby uh, woody woodpecker. I've okay, seen that. It's they're, a, trying to, they're trying to promote it as either woodpecker or peacock on a bunch of different pages, and it's an AI fake. Is it? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's I, disappointing. I'll take Eagle's word for it because she's been doing wildlife photos for a long time now. So, <laughs> right. I'm not but that argue, doesn't mean not she's proven to like, every animal out cute. there. I mean, it's cute. But it's see, this, cute. This is the world we live in now, though. What's fucking real? What's AI? What's fucking oh, goddamn? That was what I got into on that That's one. True. Is these people just to let this. Stuff that is so obviously fake, you know. Shadowhawk, I think you're gonna have to kick yourself, and come back at you because your audio keeps going down and trailing off for some reason. All right, shit. I'll be back. I'll make sure I put the link in the uh, yeah, there we go. Make sure it's there. Gotta go. Okay, Eric, see you later. Yeah. I know I'm kind of obscured by Dragon right now, but I gotta paint. Don't know if I'll get this in tomorrow. Jamie McCrimmon, uh, you know, uh, Fraser Hine, a.k.a. Fraser Hine, made his first appearance in Doctor Who. Uh, wouldn't say that till Texas Day, but uh, we'll go ahead and put that in there. Hey, Apex. Apex Comics in the house. Uh, Fraser Hines, one of my favorites. One of the last living actors to act with... Uh, uh, to act uh, with Charlie Chaplin. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a mere child when he was, you know, in the movie. Uh, anniversary of him making his first appearance. Welcome back, Shadowhawk. Uh, how, are we, how are we now? Is a Much bad? better. You were just trailing off there for some reason. Uh, and it was, was real good. low and muffled. Well, uh, 57 well we're years about ago. Now. Dude, we're about an hour in, right? That's you. It's somewhere between 45 yeah. minutes and an hour, and my phone starts getting wonky, and I got to pop out. And I, I was going to ask you real quick, Rex. Um, yeah. I know you, you met me back when I was painting, like, the murals on kind of two semi-two-dimensional wall arts and stuff like that. Did you actually right. know that I did, like, dragons and statues and stuff, though? I think that you kind of, I think, yeah, I picked that up from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, that I'd I'm heard you did. People are like, we didn't know you did this. I was like, you should have. I've done them on air before. Yeah. But well, I know you make jewelry people. and you were, you know, I think the first thing that I saw you really, one of the first things was the, the pick, the guitar mm -hmm. pick. Which I saw some more of those uh, picks. I need to pick some murals to do on them. Oh shit! Do you do custom guitar picks? Um, there's a giant um wall art guitar pick that I painted for Anthony with the stuff from Roy, oh. Roy, Roy or Drake on it. Yeah, 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 I saw that. Oh, all right, but I mean, what, are you willing to do more stuff like that, or? Uh, yeah, if the price is right, definitely. <laughs> this is yeah, all right, dude. We gotta we gotta talk because I'd love to get something like that for my wife. This She's is wild. It's player. called the upside down catfish. They swim kind of upside down. Well, catfish are messed up anyway. 
and they oh, get wow. far too big for comfort. I'm not even sure I don't, this is your traditional right. catfish, though. Let's be I'm not even I'm not even comfortable swimming in fresh water anymore, and it's all because of catfish. I've seen yeah. how big these. Things I am are. less concerned with catfish and more concerned with the occasional brain eating amoebas and shit like Thank that. Thank you. I well, was yeah, that, that. That's, that's absolutely. Too. Yeah. And then yeah, the, that's course, screwed up. And I then you got those. Uh, what the fuck are they called? The ones that. What are them new ones that, that got introduced? And they walk like on land and shit to get to other bodies of water. They're like almost unkillable fucking uh, snakeheads. Have you seen these things? Mm. They're like they're like all over the south. They've invaded Florida and Louisiana. And they're, I don't they're think they're getting, here yet. Yeah, Having I don't think they've made, made it this far uh, north. But yeah, they're scary. Here. All right, this is the non-gay one, right? <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's it's Goober, not Gomer. Yeah. Right. George uh, Lindsay. Uh, That's what I meant. He yes. was Instant Carver in his W. He was on Aristocats, The Rescuers. Uh, you know, he was Goober on uh, Andy Griffith's show. He did voices on Aristocrats? Yep. Or Aristocats? Really? Richard Long's heavenly birthday. You were, you know Richard Long from Big Valley and a few other things, perhaps. Oh yeah, you know that dude. Mm -hmm. He was the older brother, right? In Big Valley, mm. House yeah, on the Haunted so. Hill. He was in that. He was in Nanny and the Professor, the TV show. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that's strength. where I remember him. That's the where I remember him I. from the most. Yeah. Tomorrow is Forever is uh, his film debut. He was born in 1927. Uh, wow. Yesterday, as a matter of fact. Well, no. In I've seen a lot of postings on Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times. I just wonder. This was wild. This uh, this gentleman lifted his right arm hand in the air, didn't say why, and has held it up for the last 50 years. My ass. I don't know what ass. to think, what what to think about this. It wasn't good for his arm. There's no, there's no fucking way, dude. You, it, it, that's physically impossible. He has not held that arm up in that position for fifty fucking years. And why would hmm. you? It, it doesn't matter. Gravity is never ending. It's twenty four seven. Yeah, I was just thinking, even the buffest person. Even the buffest there, person, if you, you hold could your be, arm straight out in front of you, after yep. a few minutes, they'll start to shake, even if you're a muscle builder. Yeah, Maybe you, could be, it up you could be the Incredible Hulk, and you couldn't do this shit for 50 years. It, yeah. it, it would mess you up. <laughs> okay. But more likely, he had a condition in his arm. Well, Excuse it, it does kind of look like maybe that arm is just like dead if you walked up to him yeah. you could just like yeah. crack it off like a piece of graham cracker and David <laughs> like, Madden, hey, there you go, dude. David Madden's artwork uh, uh, not artwork but his birthday yesterday he was on the Partridge at family, least we right? would get back to the door again just saying yeah nobody heard that Okay. Good. Was it in Dora? What were you saying? I said at least he could get through a door again if he popped off that dead arm for him. <laughs> it's got to be hard for him to walk through a doorway, right? <laughs> if he <laughs> if they even have doorways. Well, I, yeah, I mean, he's he's obviously. He looks like a bed. You know? I, <laughs> I, I don't even know what that means, and uh, I disavow immediately. I know exactly what that means. And I'm just, just going to sit here and paint and pretend I don't know what you guys just said. Okay. Uh, Nestor Ronaldo from I don't say anything. It was all right. So I'm sorry about that. This <laughs> is crazy, though, because it feels like deja vu for me watching your stream this morning. All I saw was the dragon and, and little tiny parts of your face. <laughs> Yesterday, by the way. Was that yesterday? You can yeah. always no. put her icon up if it's triggering you. No, I, I like her little dragon. It's fine. 
Uh, this is one of my favorite. We don't I just talk think about it's funny because you never but, know uh, where where you know you'll you'll get one of her eyes popping out or a little bit of a cheek and a smile. And it's like it's mostly dragon, and then you get oh, there's a little bit of it. oh, there's a little bit of it. There. <laughs> it's cool. Anyway, one of my favorite uh, uh, Swamp Thing artists that we don't talk about ever, really, Nestor Ronaldo. He's a, a beast. I love his stuff. Oh, dude, this is especially is this, this is him. Yeah, he's yeah, good. Nestor Ronaldo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I believe. I dig it. I believe he, I, I think, it's been a while since I've seen it. I don't have a complete collection. That's why I backed the hardback book or at the highest level and never got it. It's under review. Who knows? Uh, I believe Nestor Ronaldo did some artwork, or it might be Gene Day as well, or Dan Day. Uh, anyway, it was uh, Aztec Ace uh, through Eclipse Comics. Uh, but yeah, Nestor Ronaldo, he he did a great swamp thing. Hey, Olympic. Yeah, no, that's cool. I I don't know if I'm if I've probably seen his art and not realized it was him. But that, yeah, that, was, that was cool. That was the splash page to Swamp Thing number thirteen. Bernie Wrightson ended with issue ten. Um, okay, from nineteen seventy four. Uh, yeah, all right. So I probably have in my I might even have that book and just didn't realize who it was. Because I was yeah, very disappointed have. when I was very disappointed when Bernie left. I, I was not happy to find that out. Well, I have the six volumes, uh you know, uh I have the six volumes to uh all the Alan Moore written swamp thing no oh, dude i'm telling you i am so looking forward to that gary martin book now I, oh yeah I mean, yeah. it was already be fucking be. beautiful before but once he added the it showed off that frankenstein page the other day i was just like oh, well he geez. gary martin's one of the people that i'll be asking if he wants to come on tomorrow uh you know oh, dude i'd love love to we talked to him once didn't we Tomorrow? Yeah, it's 600 tomorrow. Oh. God, it's only a landmark, Eagle. Thanks for keeping track, dude. I don't even keep track of how many streams I've done. <laughs> I'm being honest. Well, it's not my I 600 mean, stream. Yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, in fact, uh, Shadowhawk, I didn't tell you this, but now we're showing over a thousand point, what is it, a thousand what do they say? What thousand point one k uh, videos up? Something like that. Yeah, one point one k videos. So at and, least uh, eleven hundred well, videos up. Yeah, but that's when we would do like multiple streams in a night. But we would still only count the four o'clock shadow once, you know. But but there right. were times. But I'm saying there's streamed. other videos that I've done. I mean, I did four months worth of videos. Oh yeah, I, did. I, I mean, did. there were some nights. As Especially when I was first changing jobs, I remember you were doing fucking couple three, three streams. Four. I'd be I'd be catching up in the morning when I was getting up for work, you know. Mm -hmm. So oh yeah, yeah, like a white. But I mean, I, yeah, but officially on four o'clock shadow, right? It's six hundred. But yeah, you now I'm sure you've got way more more than that many videos bro you're no, I, I, absolutely congratulations i didn't realize i'm sorry i'm not good at numbers at all okay enough with the bugs okay this is just showing you what they more metamorphosize into isn't that wild some I, of them actually dude, look like leaves or sticks before they yes they do and I I love bugs and they perform a uh, very well, necessary purpose in the world. Like but they're down, so. As long as they're not walking on me, then we get along just fine. The well, minute you, you fine, cross yeah. that, the minute you cross that boundary, you are squished, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I love spiders. You stay up in your web, but I'll stay down here on my couch. And the minute you, I love you what dang, dangle down in front of my face, I reach up and crush you. Because you I fucked up. Such a hider. Somebody don't want them in my house. Now, I, this uh, is I a red build as, fire. As long as they're, they're respectful. Yeah, that's Say AI. That? Okay. If they hear in my house, eventually I get bitten. I, I've learned this the hard way. So they just keep them um, away from me. <laughs> right. Like I said, I mean, if you're like a, a respectful little cob spider that just stays in your corner and doesn't wander around too much. I'm not gonna when fuck you with you. Get into habit, so the minute you dangle down into my face when I walk habit, into the bathroom or something like that, you're a dead little son bitch. Just the way I can't it, wait until right. you get to heaven and God goes, that wasn't AI. Dad, that was AI. This so is this. I, either a python or an anaconda, but hell no. No, it, it, if anything, I, that would be an anaconda. Pythons don't tend to get that fat. Okay. They yeah, get long. Anaconda. Yeah, they oh, get oh, long, man. but they but they don't get beefy, man. Anacondas get oh, it's beefy. An, it's an anaconda, yeah. Yeah. Anaconda. All right. Yep. I know my snakes, brother. Okay. I, I had a python for years. My, you my are little I know my snakes just from the people I dated before my husband. Yeah. I had wow. a uh a uh a uh, rock python or a ball python Let's see how back in the day called Cleopatra, man. She was my baby. She was awesome. All right. I can't pass this up. Uh, somebody it posted this. Mistake. This was my first comic book I was just talking about. The giant says, Werewolf uh, oh, dude. number two. This is your first comic book? This, this is, is so my fucking first cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got the Frankenstein's I mean, monster. How could, how could you not fall in love with comic books when this is the first one you ever get? <laughs> I know. You you got human sacrifice. Uh, Dude, you, you were doomed from the minute you picked it up. <laughs> and and I still have it. It survived my fire because I had it separate. Yeah, from the rest really? Of my yeah, oh, I, still shoot, got it. I, thought that, that, I thought that was one of the ones that was gone, bro. No, no, actually, that one in the first Avengers that I that really got me collecting, and my first magazine, uh, which was Marvel Anything, which is the earliest Marvel thing that I got, was uh, with the origin of Morbius in it, reprinted from uh, oh. Amazing Spider Man 102. All that, all those, those three books survived. Oh, did you just happen to have those in the safe or whatever at the time? I, the... I I had to beg my grandmother to buy this, and it and you know, it's got Satanist in there and human oh. sacrifice and monsters, and she's like, you don't. Need oh my god, I'm amazed you managed to even talk her into it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that was like the that was like the Morbius book, the. Uh, Vampire Tales number five. My dad was like looking at that. And, ah, you don't need this. You know, it's like, oh, man, you know, come on, man. <laughs> and that actually. Oh, dude, fun, yeah. Fun, no, uh, I, I, and stuff from movies, you know. I never wanted to be jerk. To me, it was being dragged along to go shopping with mom. If dad was going to the store, then it was going shopping to have a little bit of fun. Because he would always go, hey, go check out the magazine, Rex, son. And I'd be over there fucking grabbing, you know, the Hollywood yeah, monsters yeah. and fucking Savage Sword Conan. I'd come up with four or five books. And like, well, you cool, know how guys. kids are. You, they go shopping. They've got to say, hey, I want this. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, you're yeah, I'd come, back with, something. I'd come back with like a handful of shit, right? My right, dad. So and, and we. Me as I work, you can see the tail work there starting to pop out. Ooh, look at that! And, and we have no, you know, no concept of that age of what things cost. Most, most no, people. yeah, yeah, you, you know, I you did, know. but I didn't have a normal childhood. Now I mentioned this yesterday, Shadowhawk, and and I actually found an image. Not that I went looking for it; it just found me. Here is the Golden Age uh, Aquaman. How be it? This is newer artwork. But there he is with the yellow gloves. It makes sense, mm -hmm. right? 
I I made the connection between I I think the Golden Age Aquaman was sort of a metaphor or maybe inspired by Flash Gordon, Buster Crab. Yeah. Why? I mean, I can, because he was I can... an Olympic swimmer. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, you get to see him with blonde, like, blonde, blonde, blonde hair, stud, yeah, right? Um, you know, yeah, fucking in perfect shape, skin tight. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think maybe Buster Crab, you know, influence that would make sense, Rex. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, for once, that you're was by Alex sense. Garcia, yeah. by the way. The uh, all right. You, you, you know what, Rosetta? Really, you, you you should speak up and cut me off when Rex starts making sense. <laughs> I, all I can say is I got the dragon, so I don't have to be in the <laughs> zone with you. I know. I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> I'm just being obsessive here. I I, I, I decided it's being um, made for a Christmas gift. That means I have to finish it in the next couple of days to get it wrapped. Oh crap! You gotta send this out too. Oh wow! No, it's going. It's going to somebody in my inner circle, so it's actually going to be in this house often. In okay, so it's, so it's hand delivered. It doesn't have to go through the mail or. Yeah, it's just when I have to get it set up as. Oh, uh, uh, if I had to wrap that thing and put it in the mail, it would make me nuts. Yeah. Anybody so know worried. who this is? <laughs> Can you uh, guess who yep. this is? It's a young Adolf Hitler. No, <laughs> you are wrong. Incorrect, sir. No, I've seen this picture recently. Fuck. I know who this is, and I can't think of it. So go ahead, tell me. What do you think, Rosetta? What's your guess? I don't who guess. Who would this be? He's six years old. At Oppenheimer. The child. No, it's not Oppenheimer. Uh, fuck. No guess? Okay. No. It is Cary Grant. Jude. Damn oh, it. Jude. The main thing I like to watch him in is Arsenal. And he, <laughs> all right, yeah, Arsenal. Yeah, early forties movie. Yeah, he was born in what year? Like nineteen twenty something. Um, let's see. Oh, that he was at age five in nineteen oh nine. So go back five years, and he got his birthday. So, so, so nineteen oh four. Yeah, and his parents named him Carrie. Are you fucking no, serious? No, Did no, they want to get him Lee. killed in elementary school? Archie I mean, Leach was his real name. Archie okay. Leach. I was going to say, because the, you, that name would have got his ass kicked every day at school. Actually, it, as Archie much as Leach we laugh about not it, Gary Grant. Um, Harry and Leslie were more commonly male names in the old days. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, again, you kind of grew up Around the same time I did, yeah, you know how fucking evil kids were, man. That would have got you in in a, in a lot of shit back in the day. Just oh, because. what I was saying is those names would be more accepted in the era he came from. Right. Oh, you would have gotten your shit exactly. You. I got you. All right. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Who's that? Afro Ninja. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, well, God, you throw them up there. I'm just asking. Uh, pretty uh, cool shot. Let's see. Right it there. says Afro Samurai. I was, I was close. You were close. Afro <laughs> Samurai. He's smoking a blunt. Got a couple of big ass swords. All right, yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah, not gonna even mention <laughs> the hair, are you? Not even gonna talk about the hair. Okay. Let's nope. Uh, walk right by that completely, right? Gonna walk right by that. <laughs> not that's that at all. I got it. That's We're not racist. stepping in the mines that you step in. You can enjoy it You're on your own. Yeah. I, I get have it. fun. I with, get have it. fun yeah. with that blown out play. <laughs> we'll never get this out, Star Wars or Star Trek. So here you go. Oh, that would be uh, awesome. <laughs> the Death First Star fucking board. blows up the Borg. Oh, that would be sweet. I don't know that it could blow up the board. It doesn't look like it's making a too 
too big a dent, really. Well, that's because they drew the perspective all wrong. The Death Star you, should be you far don't away. Watch enough from of it. I mean, the board. You know what does the board say? Resistance. The board ain't that big, dude. The that the, well, the it's little not big enough to be that big compared to the Death Star. I yeah, mean, I mean, I. I, I the Borg cube was probably maybe half the size of the Death Star in the original Star Trek. Look at this. I mean, it, it was not that thing. Big. Look at the coloring on that. That Bronze Age coloring. Yeah. Dude, he's See, almost I inspire a lot of my painting and my coloring after is the era when there was a lot more effort put into shadowing and depth and shading than there I'm is today. Almost human. Although yes, I don't see a lot of shadowing and yeah. depth in this. Really? Yeah, actually, there is not. Oh, yeah, I think, it's, a I think... it's a different technique. It's not the way I do it. It's not blended shadowing. Yeah, it's and I'm not even highlight st points and stuff. I'm like not that. even saying that these are maybe original uh, colors on that. Uh, you know, it could be a redo of it. My point was because you have those dark spots, because you have the highlighting points, because you have those. Even if you don't do the blended shadow styles, I do. There's still depth in the image. There's still some shadowing. As opposed to a lot of stuff today, it's just absolutely flat. They don't put detailing like that in. Miss yeah, more I got you. Well, I mean, and, well, and a lot of times nowadays, too, too, no, too many people will leave it up to the colors to add texture and depth and all that stuff. And I think a lot of times that's when you get into uh, where things get a little muddy. I've had to do, I've had to do as colorist. But that's projects, a whole nother conversation. Right? As colorist <laughs> projects, people, I've had projects where I literally had to do the inking work too, just to make it work. Because they didn't fill any details in. Well, I yeah, well then that, that's just more of somebody doing more flats than anything or anything. It, it, it's oh, era this bone. is becoming unfortunately more common. Red, oh, go? and I hate to say this, but you know what you give to one charity every year and around this time of year you get blown up by every charity on the face of the earth asking There's you. There's a reason I never them. put my phone or name on any donations. That it's oh not just my God. Yeah, I, I fucked up somewhere. <laughs> I didn't go anonymous somewhere. And like, like look, I this, really believe in charity and stuff. And I understand why they have to fundraise, but it's annoying as fuck. Well, there's been one I've been given to since I was 16 years old. All right. I told you I became a father when I was 16. My oldest daughter had a little bit of a club foot on her right foot when she was born. And I had no money. I was a 16-year-old kid. I didn't know anything about anything. I didn't know what this meant. I knew nothing. Luckily, my dad was friends with a guy that was a Shriner who happened to be our next-door neighbor. And he hooked me up with the Shriners Hospital right outside of Chicago. I got all of my daughter's surgeries and everything done for free. Um, it's one of the greatest organizations on the planet, as far as I'm concerned, from what I've seen. What they do for kids is incredible. You know um, what's interesting to me? And my daughter's going to be 40 this year. Uh, Your daughter's my age. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my oldest. I was gonna say, and, what's interesting to me is whether it's and, and she, medical she's like beautiful. That. No one, no one ever knew her entire life that there was anything wrong with her oh, until they got that they got close enough to see the scar on the back of her leg. Yeah, he, got, his, he got started early at age sixteen. Just to let you know, I know I, he he said that part. What I was gonna say is it it doesn't even matter. The thing with charity stuff is it doesn't matter. In some ways, how big what you do is. Yeah, it's really amazing when they do things like that. And I've seen a lot of cases with people who will cover everything for someone, take care of something for someone like that. And God bless yeah, them. Yeah, but what they, 
people that do that. Right. But anything, anything where you do something to try to help somebody else who are worse. I have a little, oh, sure. I have a little silly story for Christmas that would seem in some ways very insignificant, but it wasn't. So part of the context of my childhood is that when my mom was pregnant with me, the place her and dad were living in was burned down by an arsonist. Right before she wow. gave birth to me, in fact. And she almost ended up inside that fire. So, yeah. That's I mean, little... well, Rex has a very similar story. So, th well, this is the two house fires that have happened to mom since she got pregnant with me. One oh, was nine. So. Um, but so the first year of my life, they were staying with people for a while. And then they had a very, very crappy place because with dad's medical and having to restart from scratch and everything, they had nothing. Oh, no, so my mom was, we got to do something. We got to do something. We have four kids and we have Christmas coming. We got to do something. So she talked, she walked all over town and talked to every little ch group, every little fundraiser group, every little charity, every little thrift store, anything. Nobody had anything left for kids, for Christmas stuff, for signups. Mm -hmm. And mom talks about this one with weepy because all she said she remembered was, I'm not going to be able to give my kids anything for Christmas. And Christmas Eve night, somebody, something dropped a box on the porch step with a custom picked toy for each one of the four kids for our ages. That is not an expensive thing to do for somebody. But it sure meant the world to a family that was struggling. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Sure. We used to go out and take new and used, even, you know, used to people that had like concrete floor, had springs, you know, uh, well, coming dude, out when of their. When I was a kid, out. you know, growing up, we. I mean, it was a different world back then, right? But, like, we knew everybody in the neighborhood, like, within a, a two or three block radius. Like, I played with their kids or grandkids or something at some point. So, like, when it was wintertime and fucking weather got rough, and we used to get a lot of snow back then. We, didn't, we don't get the kind of snow we do anymore. I don't know if global warming's real. I don't fucking care, frankly. I hope it is. Oh, hell. I, I hate being, I hate being cold. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I, I'm sorry I hate snow mounts like that. I hate being either. cold. So okay, uh, so move. I mean, you know, my guy. Anyway, <laughs> but I would go. I would go out, and I'd wake up early on fucking Saturday, Sunday morning, or whatever, and go out to the old people's fucking houses and ring the doorbell and talk to them and shovel their fucking driveways and, you know, get a cup of fucking cocoa and, and a fucking chocolate bar or something half the time or maybe a quarter, 50 cents. And, you know, I was just, not, I wasn't out there for a reward. I was out there because I knew there were people in the neighborhood that couldn't do it for themselves. So I was always doing odd jobs for neighbors, some for helping out people and some for do a little job for a little bit of pay so I can do something that my parents need, you know? Hey, Tim. Uh, every one, like always. Every one of these things looks ridiculously dangerous. That's what makes them fun. Do you <laughs> see, look at the fucking exhaust on these things. Uh, it's hot. That yeah. thing's ready to blow up at any given second. I live dangerously. Yeah, why not? Fuck it. I mean, in my 20s, I probably would have done it, but not at this guy's age. <laughs> well, that's what makes life boys got, worth living. The boys got balls of steel. <laughs> he looks about, about our age, though, you know, if you remove the facial. Yeah, shape. well, I mean, he's, he's only got like four working brain cells, so it's all in there. I well, he can say the same about us. Balls are. <laughs> wow. He's obviously not scared to death when you got a fucking something that's like Rex, ready to, say, to melt. You have four brain cells a piece or together? No, all together. He's working up four. Well, I'm, no, working I'm, saying, on four. You, I'm working up to, four. I'm working up to four. I'm working up to four. 
Mm-hmm. Rex is in the middle of cell division right now. He's <laughs> oh hell. I bet you had this one, Shadowhawk. Art Adams. Art Adams cover. Oh. No, I don't no. think I do. Okay. No. I love I Art think, Adams. I think I bought it when it came out. I no longer have it, but uh, yeah. You know, I never did buy a lot of the like holiday shoes and shit though, because they were usually crap. There was it. Mm-hmm. They never had good stories. It was always the only one. Again, we saw it earlier. It was the. Uh, X Men, uh, welcome, what? welcome to the X Men. Kitty Pride with the Christmas issue when she's all right. by herself. And that was a regular, that was in the regular numbering. It wasn't a special yeah, issue. That was a great fucking story. But all the now, other ones that I read that were Christmas specials and shit like that, they all suck. Who, who was this character in the black, in the green, the red, and the yellow? I should know. I can't remember his name. He's by Banshee. All right, there. you let me blow it up before you <clears throat> take it down. Yeah, I guess. Okay, the green, the yellow, and the black. That's Banshee. All right, the, no. Bye, the guy next to him? Yeah. Oh. I wanted to say Captain Paragon, but that's IC Comics. Um, he's one of the more obscure Marvel heroes, but he doesn't get a lot of cover. You know, he, he's hardly on in any comics, really. I want to say maybe it could be, do you remember the Mimic? It's not Mimic, no. Okay. No, I, I have no because it's not all it. mutants on there. Because you have Ghost Rider, you have Punisher, you have the Fantastic Four. Right. So it's yeah, it's it's yeah. Marvel, Spider Man. Yeah, I I don't know, dude. I don't know who the fuck that that dude is. Well, all like Apex, he, you know, and then Eric left. So I, you know, anybody that would know who that is would probably not in the chat anymore. Uh, anyway. Well, they could just Google it for us, but you, know, you drove them off. Right? Well, my issue with stuff is always remembering <laughs> the names. So, well, why you you always got to be so mean to Eric, Rick? Right? Here's the super team I want: John Holmes, Chewbacca, and uh, uh, Coleman, Gary Coleman. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Ah, what the, I watched enough porn movies back in the day to know that's what, John Holmes. That's uh, right. not John Holmes, dude. He's a well, all right. Okay. Have I got the name wrong? I mean, yes, you got the name wrong. <laughs> You're okay, right. Well, he, is, he is a porn star. Okay. All right. Well, as far as I know, he's still mm-hmm. living, but, you know, I don't know. Yeah, he got in a bunch of trouble recently. Yeah, like trying really? to do, yeah, he was trying to defend a tree on his property, and uh, the county he lived in deemed it uh, a danger. Out in California, uh, of course. probably, yeah, <laughs> of course, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, apparently, uh, fucking yeah, he. he, he they're trying to put him in jail and shit, dude. Too small. It's a. Uh, I can't. I'm trying to think of the guy's name. It's a uh, Ron Jeremy. I thought it was John Holmes. No, it's Ron Jeremy. His nickname was the Hedgehog because he could curl up and suck. His I think that's AI. I think that's AI. Really. Da 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 da. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Not, uh, modern yeah. times. I don't know and if Rose it's the like or not. No idea who the fuck Brian here's, Jeremy. <laughs> here's Charlie Chaplin singing I the nonsense the song in the movie What's Modern that? Times. That Rex is talking all the time. Rex. Can yeah, you I was that? trying to do this. Our, our lovely guest speak for a moment. No. 
I've heard the names. Mm -hmm. I don't watch that stuff, honestly. <laughs> I view it the there same. I, 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 my, you, my view, you, you've never heard of Ron Jeremy. Before. I said I've heard the name. I've never seen the stuff. I don't even okay. think I've heard I, I, Ron I Jeremy's whole, name. I view the whole porn industry thing to me is the same thing. I rank it with sports and I rank both of them as yeah, when you talk about watching that stuff is the equivalent of sitting on your ass and watching an exercise video. Just do it. When you talk about porn yeah. and then you take looking, Timothy Olsen's latest comment, what's up, Rosetta, into context, then I God read no that meaning. question earlier and answered it with Dixon Airplanes. Are you not listening? <laughs> I know. Anyway, uh, the nonsense song. <laughs> Only on Choppy S. Theater. All right, let's hold up. Pause for a second. Yeah. Okay, am I the only motherfucker that has noticed that he's singing the first part of the lyrics in Italian and the second part in French? You may all be the oh. only one, yes. Or is that like meant to be part of the the gag? I I, I don't think I've ever seen this before. Mm. You didn't notice the change in language in the middle of the goddamn fucking song? Yes, God damn it! Oh well, shit. Well, I'm sorry. I, okay. Okay, so apparently it's part of the joke. Yeah. I wish I understood what he was actually saying. <laughs> well, it's called the nonsense song. Right. So you're not. You're not really supposed to understand it. Yeah, but I want to know what the real words to it are. I mean, I know part of it's Italian, part of it's French, and it's all just probably fucking gobbledygook. But I now you make me want to know. <laughs> wow, I've never seen that one before. Modern times. It must have been. I saw a lot of uh, 1936. I saw a lot of. Oh, is that the, is that the movie it was taken from? Was Modern Times? Modern Times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Yeah. All right. I probably have seen it before, but I, you know, to be perfectly honest, it's I been a while. Really, I didn't really appreciate like Charlie Chaplin and that kind of stuff until like 15 years ago or something when i got a little older you know in my right. younger days i was like oh, i didn't dudes, either dudes. Yeah, yeah they were just boring to me you know i was like yeah yeah they're cool i mean yeah i know they were you know part of history but uh, i didn't take the time to like you know study their career and shit apparently according to the comics it's starman ted knight's birthday today no, Ted Knight. Yeah, his name was no. Ted Knight, not not the one that was in Caddyshack. No, 
or Mary <laughs> Tyler Moore. <laughs> he was Ted Knight before Ted Knight was famous. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I never slice, sir. <laughs> Hundred bucks he slices to the right. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Debbie Reynolds, uh, of course, was the mother of Carrie Fisher, uh, Princess Leia. There's Carrie Fisher. Debbie Reynolds as a young girl, uh, hottie, dude. Back 1960. When she was young, Debbie, Debbie Reynolds was freaking fine. Me, yeah, okay. Me. <laughs> Did, did you like Carrie Fisher better, you old perv? Uh, to to, to <laughs> pay attention to your chat for a sec. Hi, I didn't technically hey, make it completely because it came from one that was already made, but I actually had to piece it together from a bunch of broken pieces, and all the paintwork is mine so far. I'm working on it now. Yeah, hey, but. It's a rescue. <laughs> yep. She saved him to put him back together, and now she's giving him new life. What do you yeah, think about the color, Shadowhawk? So, so, Rosetta, are you cool if I refer, refer to you as the female Dr. Frankenstein every now and again? <laughs> wow. Uh, what do you think about the color, Shadowhawk? Uh, her choice of colors. Dude, at first I was a little, uh, you know, I thought it was a, a bit on the pastel -y side. Yeah. But it really won't what, be when it's done. Wait now, right. wait, wait, oh, let him talk for a I, second. Can, you know. can, like, let me finish my thought yeah, with yeah. my earlier conversation that we had with Rosetta about this and what mm -hmm. I've seen with what she's been doing with the gold. Um, yeah. I, I think this is going to be an incredibly cool piece when she gets done with it, and uh, I like where she's going. I like the I I like the direction because, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, Eagle. But you told me when you're done with this thing, like it's going to have like a mostly kind of metallic look to it. Yeah, I'm going to add some bits of silver to it too, and I'm going to have taking the chalks in underneath the gloss and actually going in shadow sections out and stuff like that to actually make parts darker too. Yeah. Uh, now, it, you know, to get, make it look. Dude, you are underestimating this young lady. Make it. Who, me? <laughs> <laughs> who, me? The, the color right now, does is it, it doesn't mean anything. It's like a prime. Got it. It will, okay, it, so, yes, it doesn't mean shit to the finished well, piece. Well, we'll see really. if she can pull it off. Metallic look is going to be I hard mean, it, to do. It, uh, it's kind of like when you lay. All right. Well, if you lay in flats on a comic book rack, right, right? And then you have. And then you go back in and add, you know, texture and all this other stuff and, and more highlights and. Flare flash and all the cool special effects that are available flash, these days. Uh, he said flash. So it's not the same piece, right? When you're done as when you start with it. But this no. is what, because this is an actual physical piece that you get to watch go from like something right. that you were like, eh, I don't know about the, I don't know about the pastel -y colors. To by the time it's done, you're like, holy fuck, that's a badass dragon. Mm -hmm. And no, this is, the parts here where the gold well, done, even without the final parts, it doesn't. And really I'm look sorry, that I, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to put pressure on you there, uh, <laughs> but I think when from, from what you told me, wow, earlier, you got your lips and, all around that. Uh, if you look up there, that's part of why I'm doing this one the way I'm doing it. I, I'm used to I doing them in dark shades, so I needed to try it for you. Offer me today. An obscure body in the SK system, Your Majesty. The inhabitants refer to it as the planet Earth. Apparently, we're I like boring. to play with things a while before an You're the one that said Flash. Pathetic Earthlings. Who can save you now? Flash! Ah! Savior of the Earth! Strange object imaged 
in the imperial vortex. Now you recognize him, right? I have to point this out every time. You recognize this actor, right? Wow. Yeah, but the fucking glasses, I mean, come on, dude. Yes. Oh, I know. The, it was, uh, yeah. I just got done watching the Buster Crab uh, movies, and they borrow heavily from those original movies from in this. Uh, the glasses are. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, that yeah, was this, one of the things I, that I liked about this movie, when, especially when I was a kid, because it reminded me of the show. Yeah. You remember they they'd have like a, a fucking model with a sparkler sticking out of its ass and oh, on a wire. Oh, the rockets going. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> this this actor, if you don't recognize him, he was in the mutants in Doctor Who. But but the character that you'll really recognize him from is Lobot from Cloud City in uh, you know, Lando <laughs> Carrissian's uh, Cloud City in the Star Wars franchise. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he was Lobot, too. He was Lobot. That. Yeah, he had the earmuffs on, you know, so he can't get mm -hmm. away from the mechanical eyes or ears. Strange object imaged in the Imperial Vortex. He had cool goggles, though, for back in the day. Right? <laughs> Prepare her for our pleasure. Um, for our pleasure. Prepare uh, for our pleasure. Okay. So, so one of the things that cracks me up about my wife, you know how you mishear lyrics in songs and like <laughs> 30, 30 years later, you're actually like, is that what that's been saying all this time? Oh, yeah. And in her, in her head, it was black. He'll kill every one of us. I'm saying with some songs, right? Yeah. And I was like, first time I heard her say it, I thought she was playing. I'm like, what did you just say? She's like, it'll kill everyone. Now, you know, no, that one, so you know, that one he's character like, in here uh, that was Ming's guy, he made a good looking kind of Dr. Doom type character, too. Oh, the dude with the gold mask? Yeah. Yeah. He's cool as shit. I thought it was silver, but maybe it was gold. Die, Die. <laughs> Hot man, Donald Pleasant. I mean, uh, what was his name? Is the lead Hawk Brian man, Blessed. yeah. There we go, Dale Brian Martin. Blessed. Yes, yeah. uh, I like that. Oh, and oh, oh, right there, right, right there, got a picture of him. Uh, and I will uh, argue this forever. Dr. That uh, you're right, Blessed. look at there, gold. Clytus, yeah. he'll ball me. Clytus. What play thing can you offer me today? That, okay. that, uh, dude, come on, tell me that's not cooler than anything Marvel has done with Doctor Doom yet. <laughs> I know it, it's Alex. It's Alex Rocks Ross's uh, favorite. If you look at Alex Ross's uh, thing, he does the Flash Gordon globe with the uh, the lightning with his signature uh, on dude, some of it on his. Pieces. I love this dude, man. This is his favorite movie. You know, shit, of course, man. he's a little younger than I am. But uh, this is a fake. He calls it a rock opera. I got to agree. Okay. But here's my one point about Clash. Yeah, right there. That that symbol. That's what Alex Ross puts with All his right. sig signature. My, right? one, my one problem I have with Flash Gordon is mm -hmm. he's given a very simple choice at one point in that movie. And it's between... Uh, What's her name? Dale oh, Arden. What I was going whatever, to show you guys here. Whatever the fuck her name is. The only and, other dragon. And the princess. And he doesn't choose the princess. This oh, is the I only know. other dragon that I, I think he messed up. Motif, but this one with a black face. It's in green? Oh. Let me get the camera down a little lower here. Oh, hold on. You can on. actually see this one. Oh. actually done with the black. Basis, Wait, that move, some more motif, move it, move it slower. Is that, slower. Is that supposed to... Oh, stop it, Shadowhawk. <laughs> Look at that red hair. Mm. Oh, I love those wings, dude. Now, is this, one, is this one supposed to have a metallic look? Oh, this one definitely is metallic. Oh, it's a Hydra. Mm. It's a 3 Hydra. Uh, mm -hmm. huh. Look at that. I'm just 
This is the only other one I've done with the blue and green. Oh, blend touch it some palettes. more. Touch, touch it some more. And it, 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 it's just me, but yeah. I think oh, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stroke that way. <laughs> I think maybe you you should have blended the the green into the blue more, like down the and back the of bones, the. The bones I went a little stark on this one. Oh, yeah. The, the one I'm doing Always now is a little more blended. Well, all the same uh, no, I, Gil, but, I, I am trying to go. Constructive uh, criticism. I, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I'm never this trying to hurt no one. But ju I'm telling you, man, just just the wings on that sell me right there, man. Because uh, the green is my favorite color anyway. Uh, that's green just... is my favorite color. I've been making dragons a long time, and I've actually gotten awards. Well, it's this one the was another color one of broken. money. It's the color of uh, all kinds of different things that I I really. Block like wants to know where you get those dragons from. Some I get from ceramic shops. Some I get from ones that are just badly painted, so they're clearance in stores. This one was actually a thrift at a garage sale. I have no idea where it came from originally. But it was broken in several places, and somebody had painted it freaking hot pink. Now that's got to be resin, oh. right? All right, let me ask this you a one question. Is resin top, but it's actual rock bottom. It's really heavy. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> All right. How about this deal, Rosetta? Mm -hmm. I've got a really cool dragon that my oldest daughter, and it's the same, very close, same age as you. Uh, bought for me probably 15 years ago but yeah. it's got it's got one of those uh you remember like in the late 90s early 2000s yeah i, I don't know man, it might have been a little bit later than that but they were doing like all those rainbow paints with the the, the metallic oh. gold so this thing is like fucking drenched in that so it looks if, like tie dye exploded on it. Yeah, but like, but like metallic tie dye. You know what I mean? Like a hollow, oh like a hollow, yeah, like, like a hollow. I hated those colors. I hated yeah, colors. it's like a, it's, oh. it's like a, it's like a sculpture that's wrapped in a holochrome comic book cover. Oh kind of rainbow effect. Yeah. yeah. So, Rosanna, like, why don't you, if uh, I sent that to you, would, would, and let us would, see would you, you for one? Would you repaint it for me and, and make it cool? Yeah, let's Good. talk about the Good. size and what it would take to paint, and I'll let you know what it would actually cost to do. All right. Well, I'll, I'll send you pictures and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think it's about uh, 10 inches tall by about 5 inches wide on the wingspan of the dragon. And it's kind of a Chinese... Cool. It's one with a wingspan, but probably more like something like this. It's a little smaller. Because this is about yeah, but it's kind of more like a uh, uh, like a Chinese dragon, the the longer snake like body. Yeah, I've done a few of those. I haven't done them in a while, but I have done a few. Now I've got a couple, and I, I love it to death. But I never wanted to tell my daughter that I hated the paint job of it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple of dragon bookends right Ooh, there. Those are pretty. Back to back. Can you see them? God, right I hope you know I show. thought for a second, then it got worse in the image again. When you first started putting up there, it cleared for a second, then it went fuzzy again. Okay. Yeah, potato. It, it's like red with silver <laughs> highlights. You know, it's just regular. They're holding face. swords. Scared just, the camera. Yeah. Pizza fight. Yeah, I've got this. Oh, wow. This is the uh, oh, wow. off it that came from one that Wise Guy sent me, which is literally a dagger with the head connected to it that mounts on oh, wow. top of the body mm -hmm. to display it. Uh, oh, that's cool. That came from <laughs> it to we would gift. like you to come on camera at least once and show yourself and not hide behind the dragon. What? I was on camera briefly while I was fighting stuff. She, right. she got a couple of huge dragons on the desk. The poor girl is doing her best. when there's something huge in front of me. I mean. <laughs> oh, my. I'm going to kick myself right. over that one. Stop 